Hello everyone and welcome to the sideboard here in Somerset at the Invitational. I'm Glenn Jones and I'm joined in the booth by Reed Duke. Hey Glenn. Grand Prix Miami Champion and Platinum Pro. Yeah. Always, always good to have you. Uh, we're in the standard portion of the Invitational right now, but we're here to give uh, a little bit of a sneak peek, I guess, for me, less so for you guys since it'll be hours before you see this, uh, <laughs> of Reed's Legacy deck, which is No Rug. Yep. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your history with No Rug, because I know you've played this deck in the past. Well, yeah, this is kind of a throwback to a deck I had two or three years ago. It's, it's one of my all-time favorite decks um, in terms of like the power level, the consistency, and just like how much fun it is to play. <laughs> and in this, going into this tournament, I felt the legacy was really balanced. There wasn't a deck that stood out to me as either like uh, a dominant deck or a great choice for me. So I was like, you know, this is the time to just go back to what I really love. And I think it's going to be a fine choice for this weekend as well. Okay. Uh, obviously, the Invitational tends to have a, a preponderance of fair decks as opposed to, to the combo decks. Right. Which I, I really like a deck like this in those kind of matchups because you have so much more mana than a lot of the other decks. Everyone's kind of, you know, transitioned into these Death Red Shaman shells. But you're kicking it old school with Green Sun Zenith, Noble Horror, and Dryad. Absolutely. I just mentioned the consistency of the deck. And one of the reasons I love it is almost every card in the deck can be converted into either mana or a threat. Like, uh, you know, obviously Noble Hierarch and Green Sun Zenith fit the build, Noble Hierarch being Exalted sure. and Zenith either fetching a Mana Guy or a Tarmogoyf. Uh, but also, you know, there's Brainstorms and Ponders which find lands or threats depending on what you need. Vendillion Click can cycle your cards. And so it's really like, aside from the Natural Orders and a couple copies of Jace, it's yeah. 52 mana sources <laughs> in the deck. It's, it's very rare to mulligan and rare to get mana screwed unless you're really getting buried by Stifles and Wastelands. Yeah, it's really nice to be resilient to those cards. Uh, mm -hmm. Wasteland can be one of the, the least fun losses, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about this deck is it kind of benefits a bit from the new Legend rule in ways you might not initially realize. Uh, guys at home, Reed obviously knows all of the rules. Yeah. Uh, Chase the Mind Sculptor, obviously, now that you can get to the field first, it's no longer a worry that you know you'll just brainstorm and lose your chase to a trade. Your guy's going to stick around in a lot of circumstances. So getting yeah. there first is you know even more powerful since you get to untap with mana first, uh, and also your natural order for progenitus. You know, progenitus can't be cloned out now. They have to like legitimately Liliana or something yeah, that's, like that. Yeah, that's that's big. Um, a kind of like a hidden impact of the Jace Legend rule in particular is uh, that it's now a lot easier for somebody to plus two Jace because it used to be. You know, if you played in plus two trying to play around Lightning Bolt or them attacking or whatever, you risk them just one for one with their own Jace, and you get no value out of it, even right. though it's like such a difficult card to resolve and normally so powerful. And the fact that people can now plus two more freely makes Red Elemental Blast huge out of the sideboard. So, so many games I'm expecting the opponent to resolve a Jace, be so happy, they're like, oh, I'll play it safe, I'll plus two, I know Reed has Lightning Bolt, and then it's just like, you know, boom, Red <laughs> Elemental Blast, you gain nothing for all your trouble, and if I have five mana, I can just play my own Jace this turn, too. Yeah, so. Which, with the, all of your mana sources, you can very easily curve yeah, into that, absolutely. Uh, I think, a fair majority of the time. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to me, because I think we will be seeing a lot of these ways to kill Jace. You know, people have talked a little bit about Maelstrom, Pulse, and Bug, and it's like, not super ideal, since, you know, you, you have to be, the, oh, there has to be only one Jace for it to be any good, really. Yeah. Uh, but I think Vindicate and Red Elemental Blast are both cards that have picked up in playability with this new Legend. Move, for I sure. agree. Uh, another card loosely affected by it is Vendillion Click. I, I personally have always loved Vendillion Click, and the fact that you can now, you know, get that extra duress style effect without having to lose your three one uh, yeah. seems pretty nice. And also, it's a pretty reasonable threat against Jace. It threatens it in many of the same ways Lightning Bolt does. Yeah, that that legend rules are going to be important for me because I play the full four copies of Vendillion Click, and it comes up pretty frequently, especially against combo. That it's like, okay, I really need the effect right now of looking at my opponent's hand so that they don't combo sure. off and kill me. <laughs> But you really don't want to like lose both your clicks and, and suddenly, you know, have no clock. But I can still be attacking for three or five with Exalted or whatever every turn. And if I need to play a second copy of Click, I do it just to disrupt them, and I still have my creature in place since I only have to sacrifice one. Now. Works out perfectly, and obviously Click yeah. is a great way to clear the way for a natural order to just make sure oh, they're perfect. dead. Text against Liliana gets rid of a counter spell. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, let's ship it over to the sideboard because you've got some interesting options. Uh, yeah. We already discussed a little bit of your, your blasting uh, and you have Ancient Grudge, you know, some things we might expect. Uh, but the cards I didn't expect were Kitchen Finks, Grim Lavomancer, and a Singleton Bonfire of the Dam. Right. Uh, so, so let's start with the Kitchen Finks. Uh, obviously I assume you're bringing that in for, you know, these grindier matches maybe against Jun decks. Yeah, uh, that's, that's one bug. thing. This legacy format, uh, or this, this field, presents like some special unique challenges, so I had to get some special unique sure. answers. Kitchen Finks, in addition to all the, the reasons you named, and obviously being pretty good against burn and stuff, the main reason it's there is Rug Delver. 
and I can uh, the green sun zenith for it, but it's, it really serves a twofold uh, purpose. First is that it's just the perfect defensive card. Uh, it can still I can still get a chump lock out of it even if they have a lightning bolt and uh, submerge. I still get to gain life repeatedly. Whereas like if I get a tarmac wolf, they can just submerge it and kill me sometimes. But the other reason is with the persist, it makes it very very difficult for them to take out all of my green creatures for the purposes of natural order. And that's one of the ways that they really have to combat me in this matchup. They kill sure. every mana guy on site. They submerge my Tarmogoyfs, you know, whatever, they, they force a will them, whatever it might be. And then I'm often stranded with natural order in my hand, but it's it's a lot more difficult for them to, get to execute like that game plan when I have kitchen hands. Yeah. Also an excellent size for fending off Nimble Mongers. Perfect, just, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, then you have Grim Lava Mancers, and I, I confess I don't actually know what these are specifically for. I mean, obviously, it's a quality creature just in general, but... Uh, yeah, the Grim Lava Mancers and the Bonfire are uh, for the creature swarm decks, of which there are a number of varieties. Elves is probably the biggest one, sure. but also goblins and merfolk. And uh, those matchups can be especially challenging because Progenitus doesn't necessarily win the game on its own if I'm far enough behind. That makes sense, yeah. But Grim Lava Mancer is perfect. Uh, it's really hard for merfolk to beat, period. And in combination with um, some counter spells and some spot burn, Lava Mancer and Bonfire the Dam can really help take over a game against goblins or, or, or elves, too. Yeah, so as long as you can slow them thing. down, uh, like being able to answer their ringleader with something like this uh, that takes advantage of just being able to kill the creatures before they can kill you seems seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. All right, uh, Reed. I would ask you a little bit about your standard deck, but I think we all know what's what's going on yeah, there. Yeah, no surprises yeah, there. So uh, I'm just gonna wish you good luck in the remainder of your. Well, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having Thank me. You.